Hi friends, my name is Hannah Jablonski and I am a visual artist and teacher who teaches classes and camps here at Chicago Children's Theater. I've been working on planning some really fun activities for this summer of Adventure Camp and I wanted to share with you a project that you can do at home. And that project is make your very own shadow puppet theater. We're going to make the theater, we're going to make the puppets, we're going to talk about lighting. I'm really excited to get started. I hope that you are too. Let's get to it. These are the supplies you're going to need to make your shadow puppet theater. You're going to need a cardboard box. A shoe box would work really well for this, but this is the box that I'm going to be using. You're also going to need some kind of transparent paper to be your shadow puppet screen. I'm using parchment paper, but tracing paper, if you have it, would work really well for this. You're also going to need scissors or an X-Acto blade. This is something you might need a little bit of help from a parent to use. You're also going to need some kind of tape. Masking tape works well, packing tape works well, duct tape would work well. Any tape you have would be great to use for this. Some optional supplies you might want would be anything to decorate the outside of your puppet theater. I'm just using markers, but you could use paint or paper or anything that you have to make your shadow puppet theater look the way that you want it to. The first thing I'm going to do is open up the back of my box. This is going to be the back of my shadow puppet theater, and I want a nice wide opening for me to put my lights and my shadow puppets behind. I use a pair of scissors to do this. You might need a little bit of parent help for this step. The next thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is cut out a space to be the front of your shadow puppet theater. I used an X-Acto knife blade to cut out a wavy rectangle on one side of my box. You could also just cut out a regular rectangle if you want a more simple look. This is something that you're probably going to need a little bit of parent help to do. After I cut out the back and the front of my shadow puppet theater, I laid out the paper that I wanna use for my screen. I used a marker to trace the outside of my box onto the tracing paper. Once I've traced my box onto the tracing paper, I used a pair of scissors to cut a little bit inside the line that I just drew. I'm cutting inside the line because I want my paper to be a little bit smaller than my box so it'll fit nice and smoothly on the inside. Once your paper is cut out, this would be a really good time to draw on a background for your shadow puppet show. I'm going to draw some hills and a castle and some clouds to help set the scene for my shadow puppet show. So once you've drawn your background, or not, this is an optional step, you can start taping your screen into your shadow puppet theater box. I made four little tape donuts out of masking tape to help tape my shadow puppet screen into my box. Once I made my four tape donuts, I placed them on the inside four corners of my shadow puppet screen. Once I put my four little tape donuts on the inside of my shadow puppet theater, I very carefully taped my shadow puppet screen into my puppet theater box. I used some extra tape around the edges and on the other sides to help really secure my screen into the shadow puppet theater. So once your screen is taped in, your shadow puppet theater is complete. You can add more decorations to the outside, you can add decorations to the top of it. I cut out some extra cardboard pieces, drew on some patterns and designs, and taped those to the front, but you can do whatever you want. This is your shadow puppet theater. Decorate it the way that you like. To make my shadow puppets, you only need a few supplies. You're going to need a thin piece of cardboard, like the kind that comes on a cereal box. I'm using cardboard that came from a box of graham cracker crumbs. You're also going to need some kind of stick to hold your shadow puppets. I'm using a bamboo skewer used for cooking, but you could also use a pencil or a chopstick or a piece of wire. You just need something nice and thin that you can use as a handle on your shadow puppet. You're also going to need some tape, but if you already made your shadow puppet theater, you probably already have your tape handy. So to make my shadow puppets, I'm going to use a marker or a pencil to draw my shadow puppet onto my piece of cardboard. When I'm drawing my shadow puppet, I'm going to keep in mind that when I'm performing with it in my shadow puppet theater, it's going to look a little bit larger than the size that I drew it. So when I'm drawing my shadow puppet, 
I am going to draw it a little bit smaller than I actually want it to be. Once I'm happy with my shadow puppet drawing, I'm going to use a pair of scissors to cut out my shadow puppet. If I'm cutting out a really detailed shadow puppet, I find it kind of useful to cut it out really roughly at first and not worry about the details. And then once it's free from the giant piece of cardboard, I will then go in from the edges and cut out the details little piece by little piece. Once you've finished creating your shadow puppet, it's time to attach the stick or the handle. Now, depending on the way that you attach the handle, it might be visible when you are using your shadow puppet, which is totally fine. But in this case, I think I'm going to try and hide the stick behind one of my unicorn's legs. I'm going to use a few pieces of tape to secure my stick onto the back of my unicorn puppet. So when your shadow puppet theater is done and your shadow puppets are done, it's time to set up your shadow puppet theater for practice and performance. Here's how I do it. I'm going to be using a stack of books here, but you could also do this on top of a table or a stool or on a chair. You're going to have to find a surface that works best and is most comfortable for you. You could probably even do this on the floor. I'm going to place my shadow puppet theater where I want to practice with it, and I'm also going to need to find a small, heavy-ish kind of object to lean my phone against. I'm going to put the bottom edge of my phone against the edge of the box, and I'm going to place my slightly heavy object right behind the phone so that my flashlight is shining right onto my shadow puppet theater screen. Once everything is in place, it's time to practice. Pick up your puppets and start the show. I find that the flashlight on a smartphone is one of the best light sources that you can use. One fun tip is that you can use a piece of clear packing tape and a sharpie to change the color of your flashlight. Just take a piece of clear packing tape, put it over the flashlight on the back of your phone, and then use the sharpie to color in the space above the flashlight. And there you have it. You go from the white light of the flashlight to whatever color you use for your sharpie. You could use a red light if your characters go on a trip inside a volcano, or a blue light if your shadow puppet show takes place underwater. The options are really endless. So there you go. Once your theater is done, once your puppets are done, find a nice dark room to practice in, turn on your puppet show flashlight, and get to practicing. So, when you've finished creating your shadow puppetry masterpiece, you can show your family, you can show your friends, you can show your dogs, or you can take a picture and video and show it to us. We would love to see what you create. Just email any pictures or videos you want to share to this email at the bottom of your screen. If you're on the lookout for more virtual activities in theater, you should check out and subscribe to our YouTube channel, CCTV. And if you want more information about our summer camps, you should check out this website at the bottom of your screen. I hope you had fun today because I know that I did. Until next time, bye friends.